In the last video, we focused on creating a second buffer and sending our boundary buffer data down to that buffer. Uh, but there's something I noticed from the last video that I need to point out. Again, we have these binding points. The only binding point we're using right now is GL array buffer. So I'll just say this is our array buffer binding point. And right here, we create the one for the ship vertices, and we bind to that. And we we have three vertices, three times three vertices times three floats is nine floats total so we make enough room for that even though we don't send it down until later and so I'm going to say this is our ship buffer object and then we come down here and say hey create another buffer for our boundaries I'll call this boundary boundary buffer object and we say hey bind to that and when we bind to that that breaks the ship boundary buffer object it breaks that link from the array buffer binding point and connects it here like so and then we say hey here's some data here's the the three times four we have four vertices in that case we have 12 floats here's the data for 12 floats so this buffer object the associated memory for that is a little bit larger than the one for the ship but anyway and then we leave right we we eventually get out of this function thus leaving the boundary buffer object connected to the array buffer binding point now you might not think that's a big deal but then watch what happens when we get to our do gl function down here if you notice we say okay okay buffer sub data send down some data to the buffer bound at the array buffer binding point this binding point send down our transformed verts because we need to show the ship turning and whatever the transform locations of those vertices are well where is this data going to go it's it's our three vertices and right now we're currently bound at the array buffer binding point we're bound to the boundary buffer object we totally just overwrite the data that we put there originally and we don't even fully overwrite it we fill it up with three vertices instead of four it's big enough for four because we created four when we originally created it but we just stomped on our data there and we're not using the ship buffer object for our ship data not a big deal because the the program as far as we concern it or are concerned the ship flies around and moves which is fine but when we say hey gl draw our array then it pulls the data out of the buffer that's bound at the array buffer and, and displays that. We say, we say draw a triangle from that. Right? And, and I believe, yep, the three is how many vertices to draw. So we actually ignore that fourth vertex that we abandoned out here. Not good. Not good. We want to use our ship buffer object uh, to draw the ship. And then our boundary buffer object will come back to and draw our boundary. So the best way to do that is is to come right here. In the next video I'm going to describe what these functions are doing, but it's important we put this this call right here. I'm going to say GL bind uh, buffer. We want to change what's bound to the GL array buffer binding point. I want to use the ship uh, vertex buffer ID instead. So when I do that, that's going to break this connection and reconnect the proper buffer object up and let's run that you'll see that we we get the ship and we can fly around and in the background we're not overwriting our data so so very good I do want to prove that it's necessary to put our bind buffer above these two functions that I'll describe in the next video let me control L to cut that line and just drop that line below this and let me run this and when I run it don't blink your eyes try to see if you can see the first image before it disappears so here we go run oh yeah did you see it I didn't even see it let's run it again oh there it goes there it goes did you see that I I don't know maybe my recording software is not fast enough to show it but if I run it you see that flash before there let me keep flashing that like so flash 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 I didn't I didn't see the flash there but but sometimes you see the flash. What we're seeing there is it's drawing a triangle like here, which would actually be the the first three vertices in our boundary buffer object. But what it does is it fills this in. That's the flash you're looking for. On the very first frame, it does that. And I'm going to get in. In the next video, I'm going to explain why that is. But just before I do that, I'm going to put that right there. 
and save it and leave it like that just so we don't have that flash and we'll examine that in the next video. So I was, I was about to render this video out and I was reviewing it and noticed that all the flashing, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you can't see it. My recording software's frame rate was not high enough to catch one of those flashes and I just felt bad. So let me actually force the flash to happen. I'm going to grab this bind buffer, control L and drop it again down here. And I'm gonna throw a little boolean out here. Bool, hack gets true. And I'm just using this boolean because I want to run this code right here just once. If hack, then run this code for sure. And then uh, set hack to false. Hack gets false. And then let me run this, and the flash will be permanent. It, 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 there you go. There, the, we're, we're drawing that sideways triangle. Again, our vertices, there's one here, and there's one here, and there's one here. And there's one here, but we said OpenGL, draw a single triangle, and so this is the triangle it drew, and it filled it in for us. So there you go. There's the flash. Let me get rid of my hack stuff. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z, and move bind back buffer back up to where I want it to be. In the next video, we're going to explore these two functions and why they're important, what they do, and why they cause that flash.